your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. See about my hat. Good. It'll just take me a moment, my sweet, and then we'll go to the hotel for a couple of That'll tea. be fine. Mrs. Norton, good afternoon. We've been expecting you. Good afternoon, Miss Eleanor. I've been trying to get down here for weeks. This is my sister in law, Mrs. David Norton. Oh, so glad to meet you. Hello. Won't you sit down? You're looking very well, Mrs. Norton. Here's an ashtray. I'll tell Mr. Rowland you're here. I would appreciate his coming right over. I don't hardly see any hats around. <laughs> You don't? Where I get hats, they're all over the place. Well, hats are mostly made to order here. Oh. Claudia, why don't you get yourself a hat this afternoon? Get one here? This is the best place in New York. Roland and Francis have a superb winter collection. But I don't need a hat. I've got a hat. Which you're carrying in your hand. That's where I always wear them. That's where they look best on me. It's a very nice hat. But you can always use another. I I hate to ask, Julia, but are, are they... No, they're not expensive here at all. For what you get, it's the cheapest place in town. Oh. Oh, what? Well, it sounds terribly expensive. (laughs) You're a funny child. We'll ask Mr. Rowland what kind of hat you want. He knows what I want? Of course. He even knows what I want. Oh, Mrs. Norton. One moment and I'll be right with you, Mrs. Norton. Julia, I am not going to buy a hat. I don't think I want the kind of hat I want. Well, Mrs. Norton, you're looking marvelous. Simply marvelous. Thank you. This is my sister-in-law, Mrs. David Norton. Yeah, how do you do? So pleased to meet you. Well, now, hats, hmm? Oh, what kind of hats? Every kind of hat. I've got one special one that'll look drenchingly lovely on you, really. Drenchingly lovely? I don't think I'd mind that at all. It sounds like a rain hat. A rain of inspiration, perhaps. <laughs> now, Mrs. Norton, the model for this hat is in fuchsia and mauve. But I shall have it made for you in chartreuse and olive. Much better for you. As you say. Of course, the young Mrs. Norton here could wear the fuchsia and mauve, but... I'm not well, buying a hat, thank you. Well, you're making a fearful mistake. Well, I shall fetch it for you. You're really going to love it. How, how much do you think it's going to cost, Julia? Oh, between 85 and 110. What? Yes, that's right. For heaven's sakes. That's a third of the price for having a baby. Well, you can't compare prices that way, my sweet. Why not? It's the same money, isn't it? Well, here we are. I call this one surprise. Mm, it's very gay. And why not, Mrs. Norton? You should be very gay. New York in the winter just cries for this hat. Uh, Here, let me put it on for you. Oh, you're sure it's not too big a hat for me? Too big, if anything, too small. How do you like it, Claudia? It it, it doesn't look like a hat at all. And what more could you ask of a hat than that? Well, Mrs. Norton, just look at yourself. Well, yes, I see what you mean. Really, it is. If I must say so myself, it is stunning. Yes, but how many things have I got that I can wear it with? This hat, with everything, with nothing. It would dress up a hat rack. Oh, yes, that is your hat. I like it. It's very mad. What else have you got? Uh, You may keep it on, Mrs. Norton. I'll be right back. I want to glean the shelves and ransack every nook of inspiration for you, but it'll just take me a moment. No, I don't hurry. Well, Claudia, you haven't said very much. Don't you hate having someone put a hat on for you? 
Usually, but I wouldn't know how some of these hats went on otherwise. <laughs> Darling, why are you sh- here? Are you sure you don't want to get a hat? I'm sure. David would love it. I don't think so. David wants me to wear a sunbonnet. A what? A sunbonnet. Isn't that what milkmaids wear? You don't look the least bit like a milkmaid, and don't let that husband of yours tell you that you do. It's the farm, Julia, in Eastbrook. David wants to buy it. Oh, might be rather nice to have for weekends. Eastbrook's a very chic community. There's Nancy Riddle, of course, and the Frosts and the Frailing Hyacinths. But, Julia, this isn't for weekends, it's for good. Bury yourself in the country at your age? Oh, Claudia, you mustn't let him do this. In the first place, it's probably not a good investment buying at the top of the market like this. Oh. Why don't you have David I... speak to Hartley about it? I'll discuss it with Hartley tonight, and tomorrow have David call, and they'll lunch together, and... Well, that may settle everything. Oh, Julia, that would be wonderful. You don't know how much I appreciate this. Nonsense. It's nothing at all. Men get this way, my dear. All they need is a little sense. David's sensible, except for this. I suppose he wants it very much. You know, maybe that's why I sort of not tried to talk him out of it, I guess. Only I didn't know it till now. It's because you love David so much, you mean. Well, darling, that love is fine. But you can have it in the city, too. Hartley will settle everything tomorrow. Well, here we are. If you saw these hats one at a time, you wouldn't think there could ever be another hat as beautiful. But we needn't fool each other, Mrs. Norton. So I've brought you the three most beautiful of all. Heavens, I won't be able to decide. But don't decide. Take them all. Four hats. Oh, four hats is nothing. It's almost two babies, so how could it be nothing? Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I don't quite understand. I do. Uh, Mrs. Norton. Wouldn't your sister-in-law like to try on a little hat? Mrs. Norton, your sister-in-law would yeah, not. This hat is the only hat in the entire salon that I would recommend to you. The only one. It's just right for your features. It'll emphasize the ephemeral quality of your beauty. Really? Well, Go on, I... Claudia, try it on. You need a hat. And when David sees you in that, he won't try and stick you away in the country. Maybe that is a good idea. <laughs> and this hat is only $66. A special price for Mrs. Norton's sister-in-law. Sixty-six dollars. It's so little. Well, frankly, we're trying to lure you into buying all your hats here. And, of course, you understand that for sixty-six dollars, I mean, this isn't really an original. But it is one of our best models. Well, I meant so little the hat, not so little the money. You should wear little hats to match the tilt of your nose. Go on, my lamb. Try it on. Well... I'll try it on. No harm in that. uh, Just uh, permit me... But if if you don't mind, I'd rather do it myself. Of course. But, of course, some ladies must do it themselves. But you're going to love this, Mrs. Norton. I should think all that tulle and that large bow would be very becoming to you, Claudia. How do you like it? Stunning. Oh, really stunning. Yeah, but that's not... That's backwards. Back to front. You mean I... Is I wrong? (laughs) But it's so very becoming like that. It's backward, but it's beautiful. Perfect, just like that. From now on, it must be worn backwards. All hats with bows in front must be worn with bows in the back. Why, it's an inspiration. A whole new flood of inspiration. Are you sure it looks all right, Julia? I didn't think I looked like me at all. It is drenchingly beautiful. Still, I guess I better not get it. It's too expensive. Too expensive? You shall receive it as a gift. I give it to you. But I... You wear it backwards, and between you and me, we shall start an entirely new vogue that will sweep the country. It's a gift? Oh, oh, I couldn't. Go on, take it, my lamb. With all my grateful thanks, the hat is yours. Yeah, backwards. Always backwards. David, you're home? Been home for an hour. Where have you been? The tea with Julia. Lemon or cream? Sugar. Hello, David. Hello, sugar. Oh, you. You haven't been home for an hour at all. What do you mean, I haven't? Your ears are still red from the wind and your cheeks are cool. Nice. What's in that box? What box? The box you're not carrying in your left hand. Oh, that box. It's a hat box. But your hat is in your right hand. That is my old hat. Aha, uh-huh. now we're getting someplace. You bought a new hat. Well, I didn't exactly buy it. Not exactly, eh? You see, I met Julia at Roland and Francis. Who are they? Hatters. Mad hatters, I really think. <laughs> David, 
They charge $100 a hat. You mean each hat? Well, put it on. Put it What's on, put hurry? on. What's it better hurry? look good. It doesn't have to look good. I didn't pay for it. You didn't? Then... I was given it to lure me into being a customer. Are you kidding? It is a joke, isn't it? <laughs> you took that hat under a false pretense. But that's not the only reason. It was given me because I started a flood of inspiration when I put it on. Oh, it sounds wet. And because I'm drenchingly beautiful sounds in it. Sounds very wet. <laughs> well, I like it. Whether or not you'll think so. <laughs> oh, drink to me only with thine hat, darling. Put it on. Put You're it really on. curious, aren't you? <laughs> if it looks nice, we'll go down and pay the man for it. We'll do nothing of the sort. It was a present. He'd be insulted. David, one thing first. What now? Am I never going to see this gift horse of a hat? I I, I told Julia about the house in Eastbrook. Mm, what'd she say? She thinks she knows the place. If it's an old salt box, it must be a beautiful house, she says. Julia has excellent taste. She liked his hat, too. Just remember that. Anyway, Julia would like you to talk to Hartley before you do anything about the house. Why? Because she says he might have some very good business advice to offer you. He knows a lot about uh, investing in real estate. David, the farm is a real estate, isn't it? Yes, darling, it mm. is a real estate. I'll call Hartley tomorrow and lunch with him. No harm in hearing what he has to say. Would you be influenced by it? I might. Oh, that's a load off my mind. Now I'll put on the hat. Ah, and put a load right back on it, huh? Julie says when you see me in this hat, you'll even change your mind about the farm. Do you want me to? Don't sure. worry, nothing will change it now that I know you want it too. I don't think you're so smart after all. There, how do I look? <laughs> well, what's so funny? You look like a milkmaid all dressed up. David! Oh, darling, it's, it's silly. It'll scare the daylights out of the cows. It's not for the cows. David, don't you like it? Well. Well? Of course I like it. You look wonderful. Very glamorous. I do? Like a Christmas tree. Oh, I hate you. Turn around. Why? Claudia, you've got that hat on backwards. Backwards is frontwards for this hat. I beg your pardon? Backwards is what started the flood. Oh, but I think you've got it on uh, backwards, backwards. Oh, you. But I like you best of all. Backwards, frontwards, frontwards, backwards, backwards. <laughs> Any old way. Come here, hat. All right, hat. <laughs> Careful, David, you'll knock it off. Who cares about a hat? Not me, darling. Not me. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Friendliest house on the block is usually the house with plenty of coke in the refrigerator. That's the house that kids like to stop at, the house the neighbors like to visit. Yours can be such an inviting, hospitable spot if you keep the refrigerator well stocked with Coca Cola. You can still get this matchless way to hospitality for only five cents. Mighty little to pay, you'll agree, for the pause that refreshes. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir, and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>